I picked up this piece of tamarind at a local woodworking store on sale, of course. Beautiful chunk of wood. Heavy, solid, tight grained. So I cut the corners off and drilled a hole for the worm screw. But before I mount it on the chuck, I need to get some measurements. What I'm using is a homemade chart, and it tells me what length my segments need to be. So I cut 16 segments at an inch and a half long on the long side. They're also an inch and a half wide and that gives me an overlap onto that uh, bowl blank of a half an inch all the way around. So I glued up that purple heart ring and then started working on the tamarind. And I'm mounting it onto the chuck with that worm screw. And I'll make it round and then work on the bottom first. This 5 8 bowl gouge is what I use pretty much exclusively for this entire project. And I decided to use the uh, Carter & Son 5 8 bowl gouge with that uh, factory 50 degree bevel just because I usually use a modified fingernail uh, at a 45 degree bevel, uh, bevel I just wanted to give this a try it worked out well Mike Walt who I admire very much I've learned a lot from him just made a uh, video recently discussing bevels and angles and the fact that uh, it's it's really more of a personal thing than than a strictly defined angle and what it really comes down to is you treat the tool the same way it doesn't matter what degree the bevel is just use the bevel as it is and you can modify it as you go or later as needed but go check out Mike Walt's uh, channel. and That's one of his more recent videos. It's good information. Robin Shea, a longtime subscriber, wanted me to show you pictures of this lamp made by a professor from Yale University a long time ago because it's so beautiful. It just deserves to be shown. So nice. So this is my first time turning tamarind, and I gotta say, I love it. It's a really pleasant wood to turn. So another thing from Robin Shea was this package of goodies that I got uh, back in December. Now she sent me these pieces of art that she made. Uh, hoping that I might be able to use them in a project and I was not sure at all what to do with them at first and I'm still not sure what to do with some of them but uh, I'll figure it out but I did figure something out for one of these pieces thank you very much Robin and I also want to thank all of my subscribers Thank you so much for supporting me with that simple action of subscribing. It means the world to me. All you subscribers are the fuel to my fire.
And now that I know the rim of the bowl is, is uh, flat and ready to receive the ring, I've got to make sure the ring, at least one side of the ring, is perfectly flat. I've got that 12 inch uh, sanding disc attached to the faceplate. Now with both pieces being ready, it's easy enough just to line it up. I use the tailstock to apply pressure. Make sure there's glue all the way around and leave it overnight. This is the next morning. And once again, I will absolutely be saving these shavings. I'm thinking he was. Yeah. So here's another close up how to approach without getting a check. You rest the heel of the bevel on the piece and then turn your cutting edge uh, slowly and deliberately towards the piece until the cutting edge engages. And you can see those really fine shavings coming off. Now if you were to just go straight at that with your cutting edge without resting the bevel, uh, you would get a check and it would throw your tool uh, to the outboard side of that uh, rim. So hopefully that helps. I got a question through email recently uh, regarding that. Joseph, let me know if that helps. And if any of you other uh, seasoned turners out there have suggestions on how to avoid a check, uh, just leave it in the comment section. I appreciate it. So would everybody else. I can only talk about my way of doing things, and it's not the only way. Here I'm just mixing up uh, five minute epoxy to secure the center art in the piece. And then around the rim, I mixed up some uh, Purple Heart uh, sawdust into the epoxy and put that around the edge. And it looks really sloppy right there. And it did have me a little bit concerned that uh, maybe I damaged that uh, center piece, but it all worked out. And I sand progressively all the way up to 1200 grit. Robin, that's really beautiful. Nice job on that. Got a little bit of flash going on in the purple heart. I 
And that spalting is something else. Thanks for watching. Semper Fi.